Mitchell, uh, thank you so much for coming on my show. I highly appreciate you being on. I've seen all the work you do. You're a fantastic guy. Uh, brilliant, brilliant uh, investigative journalism as well. So it's a pleasure to have you on this uh, this show. And uh, I just want to jump straight into it. So for the people who don't know you, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, Ken. It's a pleasure uh, to be on your show. First and foremost, you're a kind-hearted gentleman as well and a scholar at best. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me and listening in at this very disturbing time of, of history because, Cain, you know, I've been doing this for 22 years. I've dedicated my entire life. I'm basically 200 miles away from the Chinese border, exposing a new form of evil that hasn't really become exposed as of yet, uh, that will really soul stir and shock the world when it does get revealed on all the mainstream media around the world, that the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, uh, this reign of terror that has controlled the Chinese people, the Chinese government and China for the last 100 years, has wiped out over 100 million Chinese people decimated 5,000 years of Chinese culture, has uh, threatened the lives of your family members around the world with this virus, okay, from their Wuhan lab, have been harvesting hundreds of thousands of innocent prisoners of conscience, particularly the Falun Gong, which is a spiritual movement, we can get into later, what it is, and cutting out their organs while alive and selling their organs as the healthiest organs in the world illegally without any consent and fueling a multi-billion dollar business for the last, uh, I would say about maybe 30 years, since 1995, when it really ramped up by 1999 when the Chinese Communist Party just banned and outlawed a very beautiful spiritual movement, which we'll get into in a moment, namely Falun Gong. You've heard about the Uyghur Muslims, you've heard about the Tibetans. So it really intrigued me when I was studying international business came at the University of Georgia. And everyone, I was stressed out, I felt a lot of anxiety. I was uh, smoking, drinking a lot. I had a lot of work. I was the leader of this, I was the leader of that. And I was, you know, my father invested a lot of money in me. I was interning at a very prestigious investment firm. So I was all about money, power, woman, success. Nothing wrong, business and dropping your ship. But something inside me that didn't click, wasn't gelling right. So I said, okay, let me try yoga. I love yoga. I love martial arts. I've always been a Bruce Lee fan. So one day there was a, a human rights fair at the University of Georgia, a top 10 school, a business school at that time. I was about 21 years old. Now I'm about 42. And... Um, I was looking into very holistic and minor body practices came and I came across this ancient minor body practice and I saw these Chinese people performing these exercises and I just it looked very cool and intriguing and I was very attractive to it and I thought you know let me go check it out so I went with a friend of mine who was studying at the time with me and they taught us these slow moving uh, you know, peaceful exercises that really did an effect on my body right there and then. And I was like, wow, these congested channels or congested areas in my body just popped open, like blasted open down my spine. Like I felt these pops, like boom, 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 explode. And immediately I felt relief, unlike anything I've ever experienced because I've, I've always loved gym, I've always loved wellness and media, uh, 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 health and wellness, but nothing that I ever experienced. So I wanted to learn more. So this whole practice, philosophy, uh, concept is based on truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, but these people have been brutally persecuted. So it really ignited something inside me to become the man I am today as an investigative journalist exposing this new form of evil that we're about to get into. And maybe I can play a clip, uh, uh, if you'd like, just to bring right these ahead. people into it. So let me share with you this clip, and then we'll get started more into it. One of the worst crimes in history began taking place in hospitals throughout the country as organ transplants suddenly began to skyrocket. 
We've been asked to investigate allegations that uh, there has been harvesting of organs of Falun Gong in China. Our bottom line conclusion after considering everything as best we could was that the allegations are true. I began conducting comprehensive interviews with medical professionals, Chinese law enforcement personnel, and over 50 refugees from the Laogai system. But I estimate that 65,000 Falun Gong were murdered for their organs from 2000 to 2008. Essentially what organ harvesting means is they're taking Falun Gong practitioners literally like cattle, holding them in prison camps, testing their blood and other vital organs, and when someone comes into the country that needs a heart, a liver, a kidney, they find a match, they take the Falun Gong practitioner, extract their organs, of course killing them in the process. People who are expecting this to sort of just be solved naturally by all we have to do is sit back and they'll fix it. This is wrong. The West has to take a role. And the one role the West can do is say, these are our values. We cannot go beyond this. There are certain lines we can't cross. This is a red line. That's an absolute red line. Enver Toti, the surgeon turned bus driver, says it's been 20 years since he removed the organs from that live prisoner. It remains a mystery why so few people have ever heard about the thing he says he cannot forget. This is my experience. This is a real true story. If you keep silence, this tragedy will continue. And people, they just don't want to touch this evil. Because if you touch this evil, maybe at the end of the day, you may not be able to tackle this, uh, the consequences. That is my guess. Wow. That's really moving stuff. So uh, there are people who are listening in audio. Um, so where is this clip from? This clip is from the award-winning documentary, Hard to Believe. And people can actually watch the free video. Uh, it was released in the, in the lockdown period. Uh, www.hard to believe movie.com hard to believe movie.com and as you can see the the evidence is clear the chinese communist party came has been sending hundreds and thousands of these innocent practitioners of falun gong a mind and body practice that has been brutally persecuted in china since 1999 to the state mandated hospitals, just cutting out their organs while they're alive, like a grotesque restaurant, taking a lobster out of the tank, cutting the organs out, and then just selling the, the, the body parts live. And yes, this has been going on around the world and for many years, but not on a scope, scale, and magnitude as it is do is as it is going in China. So yeah, this is what really ignited my passion and my why do you think to... why is it that they that they are persecuting the falun gong in particular so uh, to give you uh, to give you some perspective from what i heard of the falun gong is that um there are a number of mixed uh, there's, there's a lot of misinformation a lot of mixed you know reviews on what the falun gong is all about essentially um some people believe it's a religion others believe it's a cult some believe some as like as yourself believe it's a it's a practice it's a spiritual way of life so um, why is it such that they are persecuting the Falun Gong in particular? Like, what's, what, what's the ultimate end game over here? There were three reasons why. And those who believe this is a terrorist CIA cult is because they have been poisoned by the lies of the Chinese Communist Party. And this is why evidence is so important. Evidence cannot be denied. It cannot be refuted. It can be suppressed. It can be banned, it can be demonized, but it cannot be refuted. That's the key. The truth is the truth. You let it out, it will defend itself. So the three reasons why Falun Gong became targeted by the Chinese Communist Party, the largest spiritual movement ever in Chinese history came. One out of every 12 Chinese national citizens from the highest ranking members of the government 
to, to military generals, to celebrities, to CEOs, to half of, half of upper class society, all the classes, a hundred million people by 1999, Estimates of the Chinese government alone were practicing. That's 10% of the population growing annually. So when you have this amount of people in a communist country, as I'm living in right now, you are threatened. The, the, the Chinese Communist Party and the central co communist regime is extremely threatened because the number of people practicing Falun Gong outnumbered the number of members in the Communist Party by 30 million people. That was the first reason. Second, the stark contrast of ideology, folks. When you have a spiritual movement like Falun Gong that is founded and deeply rooted in truthfulness, truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, kindness, considering others, becoming a better person, where the mortality rates were going down, people were living longer, the suicide rates were going down, the domestic, the domestic violence rates were going down, millions of dollars of healthcare costs were being reduced, um, uh, the productivity rates in the factories, the ethical and moral conscience and, and, and fortitude of people were, right, were raising. This was, a, this, was, this was labeled by the Chinese government themselves as a crime-fighting force that was doing nothing but good. So why persecute it? Why, why, why ban it? Why demonize it? Why vilify it? And then, you know, because of one man's hatefulness and greed and jealousy, Jiang Zemin. Jiang Zemin was the president, the former president of the Chinese Communist Party in 1999, who outlawed this practice simply because it became the largest. It stood in stark contrast to his diabolical greed, jealousy, and hate. The idea of communism, basically. Of course. Mm -hmm. And th the third reason is because of the organs. The Chinese Communist Party did investigative medical research into why Falun Gong was, was, was skyrocketing in health, skyrocketing in popularity, skyrocketing in, in, in human uh, uh, health and wellness. And they targeted how the organs were, or they did investigative research of how the organs were working, the blood, the metabolic process, pregnant woman, the comparison of a Falun Gong, a person who practices Falun Gong and those who don't. And I saw incredible health benefits and how the body was reacting. So they targeted Falun Gong, demonized it as some sinister CIA-backed cult. The deluge of propaganda, incessant propaganda, 24-7, because, you know, in a communist country, you only got one state-run television, state-run media, state-run newspaper. Everything is controlled. You have no private bank. You have no private industry. You have no private, you know, it's not private property. In America, we have the right to bear arms, and I'm, I'm an American citizen. You have no property. You're, 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 you know, nothing. You're, you owe nothing. All for the state. So the, the, the absolute damage of, of propaganda, demonizing Falun Gong, in order to be, create a final solution campaign, just like the Nazis did with the Jews, occurred in order to send hundreds and thousands of Falun Gong to these state mandated hospitals, these concentration camps, and these and these uh, death camps to cut their organs out of their bodies to make and fuel a multi billion dollar business. Why do you think this has not blown up yet? I mean, you said that you've been doing this for the past twenty two years or so. So you would think that you know we we hear about the uh, Uyghur Muslims, we hear about the Tibetans, and you hear about a lot of these other things which China is doing on the side, but you never hear about the Falun Gong in the, in, in the media. Why do you think that's happening? Money. Extinction before a loss of profit. Atrocity over human life when it comes to money. A multi-billion dollar business came. A multi-billion dollar business. And organs were just, organ tourism was skyrocketing. 30 to 40 to 50% in the United States, to Canada, to Pakistan, to Korea. I mean, the, the, the waiting times reduced from four to eight years for a two to two years for a liver, four to eight years for a heart, to a matter of weeks and to a matter of days. This is kill to order. Okay. Wow. So when people say, oh, well, this has been going on before, no, it hasn't. Not like this. This is a full on scale genocide. 
um, against innocent life. Now, black people in America also have gone through something similar, and they're going through it every day, every year, through Planned Parenthood. 1973, since that time, over 19 million black people, black babies have been aborted. It's, it's very sinister. It kind of reminds me of what is going on in, 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 in China. Well, the difference, with, the difference between this is that this is not consent based. At least people are consent, there's consent, there's freedom of choice. My body, my choice. You know, you've got a lot of the, the, the feminist movement saying this. And, and, and speaking up about this. But in China, you're forced. You have no consent. You have no choice. You are rounded up by the Chinese military in cattle cars, sent to over 252 concentration camps, millions in a concentration camps. You, what, 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 you, you, you see the, 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 the reports of the, of the Uyghur Muslims, one to two million in the camp. But like you said, it never gets mentioned. And these are people that just are, are accused of, of being evil, cult, sinister terrorists, but they're guilty of nothing. And the reason why the Chinese Communist Party demonized them and vilified them and, and, and dehumanized them is to turn public opinion against them and, and send them off to these so-called re-education centers to normalize them back into society, according to Chinese Communist law. And, uh, and then you know, kill them for their organs. So this is a, a whole cover-up for a state-sanctioned for state sanctioned murder and a, a multi-billion dollar business. Wow. I think it's, it's crazy that in this day and age and with the easy access to information that we have in this world, I mean, it, it, it just blows my mind that this thing hasn't come up to, it, it hasn't come to light at all. Because in, in all honesty, you know, I never really knew about Falun Gong. I've heard about Falun Gong but very, very sparingly in the past. And then when I came across you and I saw some of the interviews which you did and when you were talking about some of the practices of Falun Gong, uh, it, it was just like, wow, this is complete news to me. I've never heard of, you know, of this persecution before really. Now you said that you've had like, you have a number of, of evidences to, to show us. Um, right. You know what are some of the what is some of the evidence that makes you believe that this is taking this is not something small scale but rather you know which has been carrying on for the past 22 years and still carries on till this very day with pleasure i will i want to play an audio clip from the main investigators because i think that um you know uh, testimony when you have testimony and you have material facts and you have witnesses uh, it's undeniable, um, and I'll share the websites where everyone can read the report. But first of all, you know, for those who don't understand what Falun Gong is, it's, it, 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 it teaches the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. Came, and rather than some kind of extremist cult, the true health to spiritual elevation is to understand oneself, to better oneself, to to become a better person, to let go of negative attachments, and to be responsible to yourself. Um, and I think a lot of people were attracted to this spiritual movement, namely Falun Gong. Some call it a religion, uh, but it's not really. I mean, I'm, I'm of the Jewish faith, uh, and I, I I appreciate Christian law and Jesus and uh, Buddhism and Taoism. Falun Gong is more of a way of life. It's an organic mm -hmm. mind and body practice. It holds five exercises and bodies, uh, truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. Um, but it was targeted because of the Chinese Communist Party's um, infatuation of declaring war against it to kill these people for their organs. So let me play for you uh, a clip. By 2000, Falun Gong practitioners were disappearing into labor camps in mass numbers. At the same time, Chinese hospitals began promoting their organ transplant expertise. I'm uh, David Maidith, and with me is uh, David Kilgore. Just wanted to let you know that these two gentlemen, these are the Esquires, David Kilgore and David Mattis. These are, uh, this is uh, David Mattis, uh, as you'll hear in a moment, he's an international human rights lawyer in Winnipeg. And David Kilgore is a crime prosecutor to the, to the Canadian Parliament. In 2006, uh, Kane and everybody who is listening, they confirmed the allegations that over between 45,000 and 65,000 Falun Gong practitioners were murdered while alive uh, for their organs. 
they have 18 pieces of evidence today over 52 well, let's continue and, 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 and hear this we've been asked to investigate allegations that uh there has been harvesting of organs of falun gong in china uh, david kilgore is a former member of parliament and former cabinet minister for asia pacific and i'm a, a winnipeg lawyer uh, doing immigration refugee and international human rights law in winnipeg and we have uh now uh done uh, our investigation and we're producing this report and i didn't know whether it was true or not and so uh, my task initially was to try to figure out a a way of approaching the issue so that i could either prove it or disprove it and not just walk away and say i don't know the number of executions in china varied widely depending on who was counting but Meta says no matter which number he used the number of executions and the number of organs didn't add up the transplant volumes increased substantially uh, after the persecution of Falun Gong began. And I mean, there's a lot of other evidence, but the, the most likely explanation for the increase is, is the Falun Gong. We pursued every investigative trail we could find. In the report, you will see that there are 18 different avenues of proof and disproof we, we considered and evaluated. Our bottom line conclusion after considering everything as best we could was that the allegations are true we believe them to be true, that this uh, harvesting is indeed happening. Meta says what made Falun Gong organs especially attractive was the practitioner's healthy lifestyle. They do not drink or smoke. On many of the recordings of phone calls made to more than 100 Chinese hospitals, doctors assure callers that transplant organs are from healthy Falun Gong practitioners. <laughs> As you can see there, uh, Kay, when you were listening to the Chinese. These are actually actual telephone conversations that are being taped by the investigators pretending and acting that, that, that they are uh, uh, rich foreign uh, uh, buyers of these organs calling into the direct hospitals and say, look, we want fresh Falun Gong uh, organs. We heard that they're the best. And the doctors are like, yeah, no problem. We've got whatever you want. We can get in 10 days. We can get in three to five days. It will be $500,000 here. So it's basically just taking a lobster out of the tank and just cutting. I want this one. I want this, this jellyfish. I want this uh, lobster. And then just take and prepare it for you. And the next thing you know, you've got organs freshly delivered within three or four days. This is how diabolical it is. And, 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 and those, two, those two gentlemen, plus the two other gentlemen you saw in the last clip, Dr. Ember Totti, the bald headed uh, bus driver from China, he's a forced, he, he did forced organ harvesting. He comes on the shows with me, basically. He's a, he's a good friend of mine. And he's in London, and he committed forced organ harvesting in China in 1995. He now uh, goes around the world with the main investigators to expose this. And then you also had the bald-headed guy, the American guy, uh, Ethan Goodman, who did an investigation on uh, with the Falun Gong for 10 years. So, oh, there's absolutely no doubt that this is going on. This is not some kind of uh, uh, kidney in the bathtub story. This is state sanctioned murder and everything has been uh, exposed and, and will be exposed. It is, uh, it is absolutely, I mean, the evidence is insurmountable. It, it really is at, at this point in time. You would think with, you know, the Chinese persecuting their own people, this is not some this is not some foreigner who's come into the country who they're locking up and throwing away into prison. This is their own people itself, right? It, it just doesn't add up to me in the sense that, you know, it, these are the, it's your own people. Why would you do this to your own people? You know, I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense. Because the CCP is a reign of terror. They conquered in order to kill their history of violence, of, of, of diabolical terror, I mean, brutal persecution. It, 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 they killed more people than two world wars combined, Kate. So when you have that kind of bull in your hands and no remorse, no regard for human life, what is, what is another 100 million people? Who cares? So, and the reason why the Western politicians and the Western mainstream media are not 
well, a lot of them have come to the aid. Okay, there have been resolutions passed in the House of Congress and in the European Parliament, and, the, and, and they all know about this. And there have been really courageous individuals, politicians, Western and Eastern, that have come together and said, we're not going to stop this. But there also have been some that we have the names of that we're trying to give them a chance to repent or to come clean because they're involved in making fortunes of the blood slave labor of China, the institutionalized slavery, slavery system that has funded the consumer market for decades now, at least two, two decades, since 996 or three decades. Um, and the organ harvesting, because think about it, to have a multi-billion dollar organ harvesting business, cutting people's organs out while they're alive, you have to have a supply chain. You have to have a distribution process. You're a financial guy. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you have to have a, you have, you have to do, you have to do, you have to have a point of uh, two points or three points or four points of, uh, of, of connection, right? Correct. To fuel this kind of business. You, you have branches, so you have distribution, everything. So on both sides of the fence, people need to be operating. People need to be choosing to go along with this. Just like the human trafficking, just you don't even get me started with the ch with the child trafficking and the amount of children that have, that go lock, go missing every day, or, uh, every every year, it's shocking. So there has to be a system in place. So those who are manning the system on both sides are responsible for this jet with this genocide and murder. I I know about the child trafficking to an extent. There's this fantastic book by this lady named Yeonmi Park. Um, she's an she's a not yes. uh, she's a North Korean. Uh, basically, she escaped North Korea and she went through China, and she went through some amount of child trafficking in China before she escaped to Mongolia. And um, you know, in the book, she recounts the horrors that happened in China. You know, during during her stint over there, and the kind of things that they would do to her. Her own mother got raped in front of her. You know, and it's absolutely horrible. You know, and the thing is, our countries, our the Western world is still doing business with the CCP. And, you know, it's crazy to me. And, you know, this I just want to give a disclaimer over here. I have a lot of friends who are from China. Uh, I live in Vancouver. We have a lot of Chinese immigrants over here and I have a lot of friends from China. This is not a slight against those people. Um, this is purely the Chinese Communist Party and them alone, because they are the ones who are ruling China. They are the ones who have their hands in literally every single aspect of people's lives in that country. So, you know, when I say this, I don't say it from a place of hatred as such. There's a lot of anti-Asian hate and stuff, you know, all these controversies going along in this day and age. Um, but the CCP, I do believe, uh, you know, it's an evil regime. It, it, is, it really is, you know, and, and you know, the, the, the human rights violations, everything that they've done, um, you know, from Chairman Mao all the way to, to you know, the, the current day president, Xi Jinping, um, they've all done terrible atrocities to that country. Especially, you know, I mean, the rise of communism, uh, you know, that, that's a failed system. That's an absolutely failed system. And, you know, there are still people over here who believe that communism can work. And clearly, you know, we see the byproducts of, of communism and, you know, what it's done to people who live in that country where you don't really own the rights to your own body anymore. And you're just like a, a product and a means of production for the government. That, that's it. Oh, I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, it's unbelievable what is going on. And people don't realize until you live under communism how serious and how sinister it really is. And these people who are aiding and abetting the Chinese Communist Party uh, are culprits. This, is, this has nothing to do, and I'm glad you brought this up because the Chinese people are wonderful people. Asian people are wonderful people. Whether you're Black, Asian, or, or an Oompa Loompa in the chocolate factory, or an orc or an elf in the Lord of the Rings. I don't care who you are. If you bleed the same blood, you breathe the same air. If you cut a vein open, what comes out? The same blood, right? You bleed blood, you, you bleed red, I breathe air. I have a head and two eyes on my on, on, on my in a face on my shoulders. You do too. It's not a matter of race, color, creed, gender, or religion. It's a matter of the human spirit and the human body that is at stake here. And, the, and, and the, the freedom to choose what you want to do with your own body and what you want to do with your own mind and your own expenses or your, your own assets, etc., etc. You should not be controlled like this. 
So the Chinese people, the, Chi the, the Chinese civilization have been brutally persecuted under the Chinese Communist Party claim. And it's the CCP that is the culprit here, that is the evil in this world, not the Chinese people. I'm standing up, we're standing up for the Chinese people because the majority of the Han Chinese were Falun Gong, a hundred million people, not, not, not the majority, excuse me, uh, uh, one out of every 12 Chinese people by that time. That's a huge number of people. That's more than any other group in Chinese history that grew so fast, so quick to practice something so innocent, so peaceful, and so natural that aligns with the Chinese culture in such a beautiful way. Truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. It aligns with all kinds of cultures, universally accepted in all religions. I mean, when, when, you, when you have Tony Robbins and all these gurus, Eckhart Tolle and the Dalai Lama, and, uh, and other monks would say, when you have a peaceful mind and a positive mind and a healthy mindset, your body and your spirit will follow. And in business, in relationships, in life, you'll be much more successful. So with Falun, Falun Gong, um, people were living longer, feeling better, but then it just became, so, it became outlawed by the Chinese government and uh, by, the, by the Communist Party and more people, more Chinese people had to suffer and have had to suffer. I just want to switch gears a little bit. You're, uh, to what I understand, so you're South African by birth. You're an American citizen who's now living yes. in Vietnam. Yes. What made you choose Vietnam? Because I know Vietnam is a communist country. Is it yes. different than China in, in terms of its operations and everything? Oh, or it's how, same. What's it like? It's the same. But China's more crazy. At least the Vietnamese and the Chinese have had great big wars together. The Vietnamese hate the CCP because they know what the CCP has done to their people. The CCP has done to, to, to Cambodia. Um, but I'm, an, I, I'm, I'm a South African because, simply because my family fled Nazi Holocaust, the Nazi Holocaust, Nazi occupied Lithuania. A lot of Lithuanian Jews were killed as well as in Hungary. So what was left of my family, they left and fled to South Africa, and that's where I was born. And I became an American citizen, 25 years in the South, and then I was called to Vietnam on a mission to help people expose the Chinese Communist Party, and our offices were shut down, and we had to go into hiding. And it's been kind of an interesting experience, to say the least, to stay in a communist, chi a communist uh, country. But I walked the walk. And I don't just sit behind my high walls, my glass, uh, you know, I, 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 um, in the comfort of my own home. I like to walk to walk. So I'm about 100 to 200 miles away from the Chinese border right now because I believe to fail to support the good and to fail to expose evil pain is unacceptable. Um, and I would love to just share another clip with you guys just to, just to share. Go right ahead. Whether, whether you're listening to it or whether you're watching it, um, this is a, a, a great clip uh, from the Child Tribunal, and I'll get into the Child Tribunal with you in a, in a second. But let's, let's just, um, here, let me just share this with you. This is document. This is, this is. But um, what you're hearing right now and what you're watching right now is Chinese Communist Party television brainwashing the media, brainwashing the people, denounce Falun Gong, Falun Gong's a cult, uh, and, 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 and love, uh, love uh, atheism. Okay, anyone who's an atheist, they can be what they want to do, but it's a diabolical way of terror to, mm -hmm. to cut the spirit, the, the, the human spirit. It's called ethnocide, the human spirit out of the, out of the Chinese body, out of the human body and disconnected from traditional values, divine culture, spiritual beliefs, um, and, and, and just terrorize you and indoctrinate you and force you into this cult of the CCP, which is the cult of cults. This is the radical cult. This is an extremist cult. This is a violent terroristic cult beyond all other cults that have killed and hurt and harmed and are forcing people to denounce innocent spiritual practitioners and people like Falun Gong uh, and take up this diabolical reign of terror. Keep your faith in communism. The government began arresting and imprisoning hundreds of thousands of Falun Gong practitioners. 
and shipped them to labor camps where they were set to be re-educated. This was the scene in Tiananmen Square in 2001 as the Chinese government arrested hundreds of Falun Gong supporters. After months of independent investigation, the seven-person China Tribunal Panel, which was initiated by the International Coalition to End Transplant Abuse in China, delivered its final findings in June. For over a decade, the People's Republic of China has stood publicly accused of acts of cruelty and wickedness that match the cruelty and wickedness of medieval torturers and execution. It stated with certainty that in China, forced organ harvesting from prisoners of conscience has been practiced for a substantial period of time. The report underscored that there were extraordinarily short waiting times for organs to be available for transplantation, and numerous websites advertised hearts, lungs, and kidneys for sale, suggesting an on-demand industry. The organs of members of marginalized groups detained in Chinese prisons and labor camps are unwillingly organ harvested. Most affected is a spiritual minority, the Falun Gong, who have been persecuted for rebuffing state atheism and adhering to a Buddhist-centric religious philosophy grounded in meditation and compassion. Witness testimonies provided to the tribunal paint the picture of a callous trade often performed when the victims are still alive. That is so sad. Yeah. It's not refuting it, it's evidence. I mean, 22 years of my life, I mean, I'm, I don't do this for money, I don't do this for donations, I don't do this for recognition, I seek no name, I leave no reward, okay? I do this because I want people to know the truth. So for people to support you, um, do you have a website, do you have any, any sort of links as such for anything that at all that people can learn more about this or, you know, contribute to the cause? Of course, of course, let me show you and then, um, let me show you uh, the website, Let's see if you've got this. Okay, can you see this? Yep. Okay, if people want to learn more, they, they should go to practice, uh, uh, they can try the exercises, Falun Dafa. Falun Dafa or Falun Gong is the same name, it's just different, uh, it's, a, it's the same practice, it's just different names. Um, and you can just go and all the exercises are here. What I would recommend as well, and, 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 this, is, and this, this website is called falundafa.org, falundafa.org. Um, to learn about what Falun Gong is, it's imperative that people learn about what it is, why it's been persecuted, and the forced organ harvesting. All the videos are here, the, the Falun Gong story, wonderful award-winning documentaries. I mean, it's all here. And how you can help end the persecution, you can act now, um, because tens of millions of people still remain at risk. So what you can do is you can join Friends of Falun Gong. It's a US-based nonprofit organization founded by Americans. You can be a digital warrior, warrior um, which I'm pretty much, I get on social media and help people learn the truth. You can share the videos. You can host an event. I also often tell people who are listening, who are um, uh, professors, you know, host an, host an event or show the, the, the documentaries from this website or the one that I gave you before, hardtobelievemovie.com, to your students and get them educated about this. Tell your government, stay informed. So um, th this is a great website you can share about what, what Falun Gong is. It's very clean and precise. Um, then you have also stoporganharvesting.org. Um, and if you go to stoporganharvesting.org, you'll see, um, you can watch a nice little video. It's very well laid out. The creme de la creme I want to direct people's attention to is endtransplantabuse.org. Endtransplantabuse.org. Here you can see all the investigative, investigative reports. So if people are so skeptical, and I like skeptic, skeptical uh, people, um, Kane, and, and cynical people, because they make me work harder. They make me work harder to expose the truth. 
and they question everything until the truth comes along. And they still question it and they still say, well, what, what about this? And how do you know about this? And that's why I love people who are skeptical because they nail right down to the source of the matter until they say, okay, it, it's, it's almost like the Socratic, the Socratic uh, uh, method. Why and why and why and what about this and how? So they keep asking questions and so they drill deep down until there's no deception, no lies, no fake news, no misinformation, no deception that can, that can uh, deny the truth. And these reports will blow the skeptics' minds out of the water. I would also recommend going to the video section of this. And in the video section, you can go to the Coalition Roundtable of endtransplantabuse.org. And here you'll see a great, really good uh, series uh, called um, the Roundtable round Coalition or the Coalition Roundtop of all the investigators um, that sit together, a four-part series. You won't want to miss it because it really devolves deeply into the facts, the truth, and the, and the vivid reality of what is going on in China based on incredible uh, uh, um, evidence and uh, testimonies and, and expert uh, uh, investigators. So I think there we have it, Kane. That's, our That's incredible. Courage. That's incredible. I, I, you know, the thing is, uh, I did see one of your other interviews, and you were actually called upon by the FBI, I believe. There was an assassination attempt on you. Is that, am I correct in saying that? I was involved in an assassination attempt. It wasn't on me, but it was on a, a, a couple of friends of mine who were Falun Gong practitioners who went in, in, in South Africa when I was there to, to um, confront the, one of the ministers of the Chinese Communist Party who is involved in the genocide. <clears throat> and while they were on the road, he got word that they were coming to see him. So he sent four um, masked men to open fire on their car. And the driver got shot and we had to go to the hospital. Uh, and I was called to help him. So I was there. But I, I received death threats, yes. I had to sit down with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the CIA as well. I, I, did, a, I did a presentation with one of the uh, former top leaders of the CIA, actually, um, uh, in, uh, in, in London. I sat down with the FBI, which is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, where I received my citizenship in America. I was there for, that's my home for 25 years, more so than South Africa, by the way. And uh, I received death threats. I had to sit down with the Atlanta, Atlanta Police Department because the spies broke into my car. They took everything. Um, they broke into a certain, a certain people's houses in, uh, in, in, in Atlanta, Georgia, where I was um, coordinating with them to expose this evil even more. And they beat them up and just horrible things, thugs. The CCP are a gang of thugs and a gang of scoundrels. They will stop at nothing to destroy people and cover up the truth and steal these organs and make a fortune of, 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 of murder, basically. It's incredible. You know, if anyone doesn't believe your story, I'm sure they believe it right now, even. You know, I mean, it's, it's incredible. The, the stuff that you're doing, you're, you're truly doing really amazing work, you know, and I, I'm honestly, man, kudos to you, you know, really. Thanks, yeah, the work which you're doing. You're not getting paid for it, you know. And what's your what is your daytime job, by the way? I mean, I'm sure you must be making money in some way, shape, or form. Well, well, now we're locked down. So I was I was a school teacher. I was uh, a kindergarten, but not even a school teacher. I was a kindergarten teacher because I rescued children from child trafficking raids. I went on one thing that inspired me that I was on the Alex Jones show, and I was contacted by two uh, special operators. They were touring in Vietnam and said, look, we saw your, your show and we're going to do a little bit of a child trafficking raid. Would you like to come with us? I'm like, sure, why not? So I dressed all in black with them. We went into this warehouse. We rescued 15 young children and women. And it changed my life when I experienced that. I never did it again. It was one time, about two hours of my time, in and out. It was so quick. Um, but um, 
Yeah, uh, in life, you have to walk the walk. You have to look yourself in the mirror and really discern and choose what you want in life. No one can make your path yours. No one can walk your path for you, especially as an adult. You know, there was a saying from the great from a from a, a movie I once watched that a, a king can move an army and a man can move a family, but your soul is in your own keeping. You cannot, when you are looking up at the gods, smiling or looking sternly down on you, ask you, what did you do in life? Why didn't you do this when we asked you to do that? Or why didn't you come to the rescue? Why didn't you do the right thing? Because I was told by others, or I was just following other people's orders. That will not suffice. Remember that. Your soul is in your choosing. All these people that are acting and are colluding and aligning with the CCP to make blood money are selling their own conscience, betraying the very human spirit. And whether you are a fallen gong practitioner, a Christian, a million miles away, what has this got to do with you? Well, it has everything to do with you. Because now you're under lockdown. Now you're under a virus. Where do you think this came from? Who do you think concocted it? But the evidence is all coming out. The Nuremberg Codes that have been violated, the Geneva Convention, the constitutional laws, the technology from the CCP inside the Moderna, inside the Pfizer, the lockdowns, the cyber attacks, the tyrannical communist policies that are happening around the world, in the West, how the specter of communism is infiltrated into the United, into the United States and others, all sourced from China. Not, not China or the Chinese people, the CCP. And I can tell you right now, any Chinese person, and I have a lot of friends, and we, I, I witnessed a lot of testimonies, the Chinese people who have fled China will tell you, like the Eastern Europeans who have fled the Eastern European communist blocs or Stalinist Russia or Cuba or North Korea, as you just said, they'll tell you how evil communism is. They'll tell you their testimonies, how evil their C the CCP is, the horrors came. Okay? So those who are comfortable in their beds now, still, and thinking that this has got nothing to do with them, and this is just a, it's been happening before, think again. Go to the websites, look at the books, read the articles and the reports, share this video, share this, this, this information, because not many people have the courageousness that you have, Kane, to have someone on like me. I, I okay. love having these. I, I love having these conversations, man. I mean, and like I said, you know, you're you're doing amazing work, right? Like I, I've seen I've seen a lot of your interviews. I've seen some of the stuff that you're doing, and kudos to you. You know, I I can imagine you're putting your life in danger every single time you do one of these. You know, one of these podcasts, one of these interviews. You know, it's it it's something that I give you a lot of credit for. Uh, as far as the entire COVID thing, I think that's a conversation for another time. Um, and I would be and I would be more than happy to because I'm sure that that's going to go on for hours on end because I have a lot yeah. of questions in, re in regards to yeah. that stuff you know but and I have um, a lot of evidence to prove I have a lot of evidence to prove as well well I'm sure you, I'm sure you have a lot of information to, to show us you know and you know but I want to thank you so much for coming on uh you've been an absolute pleasure to have and you know like I said the the evidence is insurmountable you know as to what you know the CCP is doing uh with the Falun Gong and you know, with the uh, illegal uh, organ harvest thing, and it's it's something that it's sad. It's a sad reality, and you know, you're doing an amazing job in in trying to get the word out over there. So you know, I wish you all the best in this. Thank you, Kate. And I wanted to share with you and your listeners one more thing. Um, you know, I haven't got any titles. I'm not a CIA operative or Mossad, or because I'm Jewish. I'm not part of the government. I'm not. I'm not a military. Hell, I, I didn't even graduate. I hardly graduated college, let alone high school. But what we have in life is our hearts, and you mustn't be scared to follow them. Listen to yourself, believe in yourself, and do the right thing. Because again, to fail to support what is good and to fail to expose what is evil is unacceptable. So thank you, Kay, and I appreciate it. And thanks everybody for listening. And until next time. All the best. I'll see you when I see you. Thank you so much again. Thanks, Kate.